I titled the sermon for today, Kingdom Impact, because it is Mother's Day. And we are honoring all moms everywhere this morning. And I think that sometimes as a mother, we don't really think about the role that we play and the impact and the influence that we have on the children who have been placed in our lives. They are gifts. But that impact is very real. Let me read you the story of Moses in Exodus chapter 2. Now a man of the tribe of Levi married a Levite woman, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. But when she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him, and coated it with tar and pitch. And then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe, and her attendants were walking along the river bank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her female slave to get it. She opened it, saw the baby. He was crying, and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. So the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this baby and nurse him for me, and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. One day after Moses had grown up, he went out to where his own people were and watched them at their hard labor. He saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his own people. Looking this way and that and seeing no way, no one, he killed the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. The next day he went out and saw two Hebrews fighting. He asked the one in the wrong, why are you hitting your fellow Hebrew? The man said, who made you ruler and judge over us? Are you thinking of killing me as you killed the Egyptian? Then Moses was afraid and thought, what I did must have become known. When Pharaoh heard of this, he tried to kill Moses. But Moses fled from Pharaoh, went to live in Midian, where he sat down by a well. Now a priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came to draw water and fill the troughs to water their father's flock. Some shepherds came along and drove them away, but Moses got up and came to their rescue and watered the flock. When the girls returned to Raoul, their father, he asked them, Why have you returned so early today? And they answered, An Egyptian rescued us from the shepherds. He even drew water for us and watered the flock. And where is he? Raoul asked his daughters. Why did you leave him? Invite him to us and give and have something to eat. Moses agreed to stay with the man who gave his daughter Zipporah to Moses in marriage. Zipporah gave birth to a son, and Moses named him Gershom, saying, I have become a foreigner in a foreign land. In this biblical story, we find that Moses had been born. He was a newborn. He was helpless. He was at the mercy of his caregivers. And in that circumstance, our scriptures tell us that it was his mother who hid him because at that time there was an edict from the king that all male babies were to be put to death. So in order, of course, as a mother would probably do to protect this young baby, Moses' mom did the only thing that she could. She hid him. 
And then when she could no longer hide him, when he began to grow and to make a bit more noise, when it became more difficult to keep a baby's cries under wraps, she made the decision to try her best to preserve his life. And she made that basket of reeds and placed him in the river Nile and set his older sister Miriam to watch over him. I don't know what this mother was thinking if she thought that perhaps someone would rescue him and would have compassion on him. An Egyptian, an Egyptian princess. It seems almost kind of like an audacious plan, doesn't it? To think that a princess would rescue her son and would raise him up as their own. I often wonder if she thought about the plan that God had placed in her heart for her child. But that's exactly what happened. It was the perfect place for a baby drifting amongst the reeds. And lo and behold, this Pharaoh's daughter finds this baby floating in that reed basket and she has compassion on that young helpless baby, the one that the king had ordered to be killed. And she decides to take him in as her own. And thus Moses was saved from certain death. Not only saved, but he had the best of the best for the formative years of his life as far as his education and his life in the palace. And it would prepare him to go on and do the great things that God had destined for him. And now here we are, 2,000 years later, reading about this story of Moses in our Bible, all because of the actions of a mother and her trusting in the plan for her child that God had put in her heart. Why did I choose this mother out of the Bible to talk about with you all this morning? I could have chosen any number of other mo mothers that we are told about in our scriptures. But I think that this passage speaks to us about a mother's love and how she acted in faith and how that played out in the life of her child. I could have chosen Samuel's mother, or Sarah and Isaac, or Rebecca and Joseph. Why not choose them? I'm sure that they love their children as well. I'll tell you why I chose Jochebed, who is the wife of Amron and the mother of Moses and Aaron and Miriam. Why I chose their story. It is because I believe it speaks volumes about the unknown implications that a mother's role has in the life of her child. How her actions and her faith played out in the life of that young man, all combining to fulfill God's plan, not only for her child Moses, but for the Israelite nation as a whole, thus having Kingdom impact. Think about it. What if Jochebed had done things differently? What if she had taken the position of, this is not going to make a difference in the great big scheme of things? Or, this is too hard for me? Or whatever other number of doubtful thoughts that seem to creep into our minds as mothers? Those moments where we doubt what we are doing and we wonder if there really is a God plan for the life of our child and for us. What if she had listened to those thoughts instead of the God thoughts that God obviously spoke into her life and over the life of her son Moses? What if? I think sometimes as Mothers, we often doubt what we are doing and simply raising our children, and we wonder if it has any lasting or significant impact. Many of you have heard the story about the starfish and the little girl 
who was walking along the beach and tossing them back into the ocean, but perhaps some of you have not. No matter if you have heard it or not, it's a stark reminder of the value of someone in the life of another. It goes something like this. One day a man was walking along the beach when he noticed a young girl picking something up and gently throwing it back into the ocean. Approaching her, he asked, what are you doing? And she replied, throwing starfish back into the ocean. The surf is up and the tide is going out, and if I don't throw them back in, they will die. Young lady, the man said, don't you realize there are miles, miles of beach and hundreds of starfish? You can't possibly make a difference. After listening politely, the young girl bent down and picked up another starfish, and she threw it back into the surf. And she smiled at the man, and she said, I made a difference for that one. And the man looked at the little girl inquisitively and thought about what she had done and inspired. He joined her in throwing starfish back into the sea so that many of them were saved. That young girl made a difference to each starfish that made it back into the ocean. What about you in the life of your child, your children? What is their destiny in the kingdom of God? What kingdom impact will they go on to have? What role will they play? And what role have you played in that journey? Have you ever stopped to think about it? What if they too go on to plant the seed of salvation in a modern day Moses or Billy Graham? Or you fill in the blank with whoever it is that has resonated the most to you that had a God impact in your life. You don't know what the outcome of someone's story is going to be. The story isn't over yet. Do you think that Moses' mother knew that what she was doing by listening to her God-given dreams and faith would later reap the impact that it did in the life of Moses? Do you think that she realized at the time that she was doing the things that she was doing, the impact that Moses' life would have, not only for the Israelite people, and them being led out of slavery from the Egyptians, but also for us sitting here in this room or attending online now, that 2,000 years later I would be preaching about her story and the life of her son on Mother's Day in 2024. And telling others about the fact that what she sowed into the kingdom of God, into her child, is still bearing fruit all this time later. We don't know the impact of our actions that we sow into our children on the kingdom of God. We don't know the seeds that were planted and how God will use those seeds to do the extraordinary for his kingdom and to impact others. We can't have the good either without the bad. After all, we're human. We make dumb decisions and we make bad choices sometimes, even when our hearts belong to the Lord. Think about David. David was a man after God's own heart and All of the dumb decisions and bad choices that he made during his lifetime. And yet, he had a faith and he loved God with all of his heart and God redeemed it. Better yet, God loved him with all his heart. And he kept him so that through him, the Messiah would eventually come. David, too, had a mom, and good or or bad, she played a role in his life. 
I imagine Moses' mom did not know the bad things that he would go on to do. What about that he would someday grow up and murder that Egyptian? She couldn't see that when he was just a newborn baby. Remember how he saw, witnessed the Egyptian assaulting one of his fellow Israelites and he murdered him and he buried his body, the scriptures tell us, in the sand. Even though it was harsh circumstances, it was still the murder of another human being. Can you even imagine when the rumors of that event began to circulate and when it reached the ears of Moses' mother? When she heard the whispers, when she heard this, felt the stares, what must she have felt and been thinking about her precious baby boy who had now grown up? Hearing that her kid had just taken the life of another, do you think that she at that time was thinking, yes, but he's going to go on and do great things for the kingdom of God? The doubts, I imagine, crept in, and I'm quite confident she dared not hope that anything good could come out of that situation. Because who would have believed her? She probably didn't even believe in herself, right? Great achievements for God? What did she even believe about her child at that point? I mean, we read the story, and I don't know if we've ever really even stopped to think about what she might have been thinking. But I know as a mother myself, I most likely would have struggled to believe that anything good could have come out of that situation. How about you? Where are you at with your child or your children and their journey? Have you written them off in regards to what God can and cannot do in their life because of what it is that we see with our eyes? Do you know why God uses the things of this world that people discard and write off? He has a purpose and he has a plan for it, folks. Why did God use Moses, a man who would murder someone? Same story with David. I mean, that's about as bad as it gets, right, folks? Why would God choose him to work his miracle through? So that people will credit God with the miraculous instead of people. We see countless examples in the Bible of God using flawed people that I'll be honest when I was a new Christian and I would read these stories, I used to wonder why would God ever use some of the people that he used. And that's exactly why God uses the imperfect over and over in the stories that he gave to us to show us, to reveal to us that it's not about what people have done in their past or what they can do. Our humanness, folks, is limited. God's greatness, however, is limitless. It's all about what God can do through the people who will bend to his will and allow him to use them despite your past, your present, or your future. And what about those mothers who come to the table of Jesus later in life? Or maybe perhaps you're just starting out in your relationship with Jesus now and your children are grown. Maybe you didn't fully understand the importance of raising your sons or your daughters with the knowledge of Jesus. Or maybe you did what you knew at that time. But maybe it wasn't the best job that could have been done. God knows, and he is still present in our lives now. Maybe you did the best that you could, and you actually thought you did okay, and yet still somehow your kids decide to live their own lives their own way. Maybe it just isn't exactly the life that God would want for them. What now? As their mamas, as followers of Christ, as his sons and his daughters, we pray. 
We pray and we give them to the Lord. And we get others in our circle to pray. Because God can, and He still does today, folks, extraordinary things that we cannot do. There is power in prayer. As we wrap up this morning, I want us to all be reminded of the mom and Moses. His story. The story that we talked about here this morning in our service of how we can and we should strive to have impact and influence in the lives of our children. But I want us to also be reminded of the greatness of our God and how he loves your children because, folks, they're his children too. And he has a plan for them, a good plan. Let us not grow discouraged when things look very differently than how we believe they should look when it comes to doing something great for the kingdom of God. As long as we are breathing, as long as they are breathing, the story for them isn't over yet. And just as in the life of Moses and the mother who hid him in her faith, let us remember it is God and God alone who can do the extraordinary with the ordinary. Who takes what we mothers have sown and turns it into something useful for kingdom impact. Amen? Let us stand and sing together.